Hello and welcome to the I Am Woman Project, where every week we have deep thought-provoking and interesting conversations with thought leaders, change instigators, rule breakers and creative minds who think differently, sparking creativity and inspiration. Our special guests on our show cover a variety of topics just for you and they share their personal stories to inspire, motivate and empower you, our listener. The I Am Woman podcast is produced for your enjoyment and show notes are found at www.catherineplano.com. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get into the show. I have a super awesome announcement. What would you say if I could give you a chance to be mentored by the world's leading international thought leaders, authors, speakers, and change makers? It's time for you to create space for miracles with the launch of the Radical Shift Summit for anyone wanting to experience change in their lives. Commencing on the 9th of October, over an eight-day period, these global gurus will help you understand how to achieve lasting positive transformation and make a quantum leap in life and in business. The summit offers teachings and recent discoveries from the world of neuroscience, cognitive psychology, medicine, philosophy, and much more. So don't miss out. This summit is an information-packed, intensive course that will help you to understand the complex connection between your mindset and behavior. Make no mistake, this is not just a talk fest. Workshops and presentations are designed with practical everyday life tips that you can easily apply at home, work and in life. And all you have to do is go to www.com radicalshiftsummit.com so it's r-a-d-i-c-a-l-s-h-i-f-t-s-s-u-m-m-i-t dot com and grab your free pass now today we have the super angelic tanya de jong and i have to apologize in advance because i was filled with such excitement that my tongue got twisted while speaking what can i say i am human tanya is a trailblazing australian soprano award-winning social entrepreneur creative innovation catalyst spiritual journey woman storyteller and global speaker with a grandmother who invented the first foldable umbrella creativity and innovation are in Tanya's blood and as the daughter of Holocaust survivors she has learned about resilience and reinvention and developed a passion for diversity and social inclusion. Tanya's TED talk How Singing Together Changes the Brain has sparked international interest through her new Sing for Good project Creativity Australia which aims to get the whole world singing and raising funds to support disadvantaged people. Tanya also founded The Song Room which has provided access to creative learning and well-being for over 400,000 disadvantaged Australian children since 1999. So it's not surprising that her mission is to change the world one voice at a time. So let's tune in to this inspirational woman. Enjoy. Today we have a very special lady for you, Tanya de Jong from a company called Creative Universe. Universe. So welcome to I Am a Woman Project. Thank you very much, Catherine. It's an absolute honour to be here with you. Now, and it's been some time that we've been trying to get you on the show, so really excited to finally have you here. Thank you. So what I was thinking is um, before we started with the show, we're having a great conversation about... um, finding your voice. But before we get into that, let's unpack Tanya for our listeners and tell us your story. Well, just very briefly. uh, (laughs) So uh, I was born in Holland, actually, came to Australia when I was one. uh, So my my parents are Holocaust survivors. Um, 
My grandmother invented the very first foldable umbrella. My grandfather was an acclaimed sculptor and his work resides in the great galleries around the world. I was educated in Melbourne um, at Corowa Anglican Girls School and then um, I, I went to the United States on a tennis scholarship. Then I studied law at the University of Melbourne and opera at the Victorian College of the Arts and then a, an advanced graduate degree in um, music and opera at the University of Melbourne College of the Arts. Then I started tennis coaching, singing, teaching businesses, and I'm a serial entrepreneur. And then I started my group Potpourri uh, 30 years ago this year, 30th anniversary. We started when I was eight. Congratulations. <laughs> then, <laughs> thank you. Then I started an in events company called MTA Entertainment and Events. And then my first charity, The Song Room, in 1999, which has reached hundreds of thousands of disadvantaged school children in Australia through music and arts programs, which improve self-esteem, educational outcomes and so on. Then I started my second charity, Creativity Australia, in the With One Voice program in 2008, which are wellbeing and social inclusion programs, bridging the gap between those more fortunate with those less fortunate in our in our community. Then I started the Creative Innovation Global Conferences and CI 2017, Creative Innovation 2017 Asia Pacific takes place 13th to 15th November in Melbourne with some of the leading futurists, leaders, thinkers, technologists in the world coming to Melbourne for that. And then through my own company, Creative Universe, I do a lot of not only singing, so I, of course, singing is my real passion. La, 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 I think you're playing a song of mine in this program. Yes. And keynote speeches around the world about innovation, entrepreneurship. I consult to top teams and organisations on building a culture of innovation, managing and preparing for disruption, uh, really managing and preparing for change and giving people the skills and mindsets that they need for what is a very fast accelerating world. And we also um, have a co-working space which is called Dimension 5 in South Melbourne with 1,100 square metres of hot desks, fixed desks, private offices and so on. So there's an enormous range of different projects uh, that keep me going day and night. <laughs> Well, I'm sitting here. I've got my jaw on the ground here trying to pick it up, just <laughs> wondering how you get to do all of this. It's amazing what you have manifested and uh, of abundance too. Thank you. No, look, it is it is amazing. It's actually, um, in a sense, it's actually more than I planned for and probably more than I would like to have on my plate. Um, and I, I guess I never expected that all these different projects would you know, would continue and, you know, often as an entrepreneur you'll start something and then it finishes and then or you sell out of it or it closes down or it doesn't continue to survive and then you start a new project. In my case, most of the things that that I've started have continued and and that's really exciting and wonderful but on the other hand you've got to work out how, to, how you can continue to run all those things um, in parallel and make sure that they all realise their potential and, and have the impact that they potentially, you know, that they potentially can. You've obviously got a good team that works with you to make this all happen and come to life. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I have some wonderful people that I've worked with for a very long time on quite a number of these projects. Um, of course, some of the projects I don't work in anymore, so I don't work in the song room anymore. There's a wonderful team leading that charity and MTA Entertainment and Events, I've now sold the majority share of that to one of the girls in my group. So gradually, you know, I am looking at the different projects that I have and going, okay, who's the successor for that project or for that project and trying to find emerging talent and, and leaders who can actually take over those projects so that I get some sleep one day. <laughs> yes, I know. Sleep is extremely important. I'm curious, how did you come up with the uh, company name Creative Universe? Creative Universe? Well, that's sort of like, um, that's, I, I'm so, I, 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 I was, I felt so lucky when we got that name because it was like it epitomizes everything that, that I've been working towards all these years. So, um, 
my goal, uh, my personal goals have always been around, you know, helping people to find their creative voice and, and having creative projects and enter- enterprises and events and helping people to unlock their creativity. And I guess I have a really, um, I believe that everyone's connected, you know, and that um, every si- there's no accidents here. Mm. And so the word universe to me is all around creating that that connection between all of us and creating a universe that is in harmony and um, is meaningful and is um, focused on raising our consciousness and fostering abundance and helping people to find their unique voice. So, yeah, it seemed appropriate to call us Creative Universe. Mm, I love that. So, Tanya, how do you help people find their creative or their unique uh, creative voice? Well, I think to begin with that goes down to um, making sure that people don't feel silenced. So, as you probably know from my TED Talk, How Singing Together Changes Your Brain, I was told as a 14-year-old girl by my best friend at school never to bother having singing lessons and I really wanted to have singing lessons. So I got the message very early on that I couldn't sing and many, many people experience this um, at school that they can't sing or that they're not creative and they're told this by either, you know, their peers or by often by teachers or sometimes by their parents, which is a real tragedy. And so people often grow up thinking, well, I'm not creative and I can't sing, etc. And I spent a couple of years thinking, well, I better just do backstage in the school musical. And then I auditioned for the chorus of the musical Oklahoma. And to my amazement, I did get the lead role, <laughs> despite of the fact I hadn't had singing lessons. And singing has gone on to be my driving passion. But in so doing, I've taken an incredible personal journey because um, singing is is not an instrument that is external to you. It's actually your human instrument. Our voice is the language of our hearts and our voice really expresses who we are as human beings. So if your voice is silenced and your creative voice is repressed in some way, it really means that your true self is not fully present. And so... In unlocking my own voice over all these years, which has not been an easy process and I still feel there's more to come, (laughs) but in unlocking that I've had to work on a lot of my own personal issues, um, my blocks physically, emotionally, spiritually, you know, my programs from the past and, Mm. you know, how they play out, my stories that repeat um, and try to let go of as much as I can in a process to, you know, to, to be really who I who I was born to be on this planet, I guess. And so when in the work that I do, and let's say with the one with one voice choirs with Creativity Australia, we get a lot of people coming to the choirs who are, you know, have suffered abuse, have depression, disabilities, are unemployed and, and have a very low self esteem to begin with. And don't speak out much. Some people actually don't speak out for weeks at all. Um, it's almost like literally they're silenced. Even though they have a voice, they, they won't speak. And then after a while you start to hear them speak, to hear them sing, to see the light come on into their eyes, to see them start to ask for what they need in life and connect to others. It's a very powerful thing to be able to be a catalyst for that. And I guess one, you know, one of my goals, not only, you know, uh, I'm a soprano, yes, I'm a social entrepreneur. I I like to think of myself as a creative innovation catalyst and and, and an alchemist in a way so mm. that in a sense um, when people join our programs or some of the programs we do, uh, they're going to be, they're going to be challenged, you know, like, it's not for the faint-hearted. Like if, if people are going to join these programs, they're going to either raise their consciousness to a higher level or they're going to cop out. And so one of the things that we do with our With One Voice program is um, we deliberately bring together people like you and I who have jobs, um, you know, families who are fortunate 
as many people listening to your program will be, with those who are less fortunate, so people with depression, disabilities, migrants, job seekers, age 9 to 90 of all faiths or backgrounds. And every week we not only sing together, which neuroscientifically is shown to make you healthier, happier, smarter, more creative, and improve your memory, language, concentration, and, and there's a raft of benefits associated to singing, particularly with others. But we actually help um, connect people to one another so they can care for one another. So they share supper and we share what's called the wish list program, which is a very innovative and very simple tool whereby anyone in our choir programs can ask for whatever they need in life. Their wishes get read out or they, or they say what their wish is in the room and then other people in the choirs can fulfill those wishes, make them come true. So it could be help with finding a job, mentors, skills, friends, a partner, learning how to use the internet. And it's miraculous, really, each week we see people put up their hands and start to grant the wishes of others in the choirs. And and it's interesting also to see that a lot of the, the more advantaged people, the fortunate people like us also have, you know, we have needs in our life. We need someone to care for our garden or mind our house or walk our dogs and We'd love to have someone who's less fortunate to help us do those tasks and that way they can find some meaning and purpose. And I must say here at Dimension 5 where I'm, you know, sitting doing this interview, you know, today there was two people who are quite disadvantaged with disabilities who are helping us with one of our big mail outs and they just love coming in because they feel lonely and isolated in their houses and they just want to do something that's meaningful and contribute to to our world. Um so in answer to the question, you know, how do we help uh, or, you know, how do we help people find their voice, which I guess is my mantra in life, is we need to actually give people the chance to contribute to our society in some way so that they feel a sense of belonging and so that they feel like they can be heard. And we're living in a world where there's a greater and greater division between the haves and the have-nots. Inequality is growing every day mm. and we see immense wealth um, through entrepreneurs who are you know starting new technology companies and other incredible startups and all kudos to them and then we see a lot of people who are being left behind through technology who can't keep up with the pace of change and no matter how hard we work to retrain these people we have to accept that more and more people will become disadvantaged and we as a society collectively need to work out how we're going to solve that problem so that people do feel like they have a voice, a meaningful voice in society because that's what everyone needs. If you're going to – you can't go through your life without a sense of meaning and purpose. <laughs> you know, you actually need to feel like you matter in yeah. some way. Yeah. So true. As you're talking, uh, I was mm. thinking to myself that – uh, for me, I was putting myself in somebody else's shoes, coming to one of your classes and then having asked to sing. But even as you were speaking about your own experience, I could almost mm. see that, you know, because obviously with sound, it comes from a, the, the, the vibrations from a different vibration. And I can see how that can move energy within your body and unblock some of those old programs. But also yes. by putting yeah. myself in somebody else's shoes, um, you know, it's true. Like, you know, there, there is this thing that maybe, I mean, I, I'm, I'm listening to you and going, well, I can't sing. Um, mm, but I yes. don't know where that belief comes from. Uh, yes. And I've gone to, uh, you know, ashrams where we've chanted and, you mm -hmm. know, and, and there's this vibe about it. It doesn't matter if you can sing or can't sing, but just the fact that you do it in in a, a kind of like a, a group, there's this mm -hmm. energy that I felt like the top of my head was going to pop off when I did yes. that at the ashram. Well, there so, you go. You can sing. <laughs> well, you know, well, it's true. Everyone can sing. It's just mm -hmm. we uh, get in our way. We do, and a lot of people um, – so there's two things. I mean, very interesting points there. Well, number one, uh, when you sing with other people in particular and, and have a look at the TED Talk, but absolutely, I mean, the neuroscientific benefits are well proven. At an energetic level, though, um, you do raise your energy. You raise your vibration, and you are – because you're connecting more to the right side of your brain, which is the side of your brain that's a more intuitive, imaginative, creative – you know, it's your battery charger side of your brain. 
you then start to connect more to other people and ask for what you need in life and feel more empowered. Whereas normally in life, we stay more on the left side of our brain, which is the side that separates us from other people, the analytical Mm -hmm. side. We need to get people more into the right side of their brains if we're going to create a society that is able to solve these problems that are, you know, that are, that are accelerating in our direction. Mm. And, um, and yes, everyone can sing, but unfortunately we have these, again, these stories and programs and you said you didn't know where yours came from that say I'm not a good singer. And, you know, if I ask a room full of a 1,000 people or 100 people how many people have been told that they can't sing, sing by their parents, their teachers, their kids or someone else or they somehow have this thought in their mind that I'm, I can't sing, about 85% of the people in the room always put up their hands. Mm, yeah, so true. So somehow, but, but if we were in Africa or so let's say um, one of the South Pacific nations like Fiji or Vanuatu, uh, there wouldn't be that program there because – as a culture, those cultures grow up singing and dancing together. Mm. In fact, in you know traditional times and still today, these tribes sing and dance together to to build their um, their courage, to build their strength, to build their tribe, and to ward off their enemies. So, tribes who sing and dance together are generally more united, more harmonious, singing off the same song sheet, I guess, and yeah. that. They can, they can protect themselves better. And we're not doing that now. We're more separated than we've ever been before. We talk more to, to boxes and screens than we do to one another. And it really becomes fundamentally important to nurture the attributes of us as human beings that set us as, apart from mach- machines, you know, love, creativity, courage, compassion, and so on. Because as I said to you earlier when we were talking, you know, the robots are coming. Yeah artificial intelligence, new technologies. And as human beings, we need to actually nurture the attributes and really build our strengths so that we can remain creative and innovative while, you know, more and more people are going to lose their jobs due to, uh, you know, artificial intelligence and robotic repetitious jobs, etc., are going to be become redundant. It's You know, the statistics are saying over 60% of current middle-class jobs are going to become redundant, let alone all the blue-collar jobs which will be automated. Mm. So we're in for one hell of a ride, and um, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that human beings are not going to be able to thrive. It means, though, that we do have to work together to work out how everyone or as many people as possible are going to be able to thrive and live meaningful lives going forwards. Mm. And you mentioned before about... Um, to uh, raise the level of consciousness. Uh, so talk us through that. Um, I guess what I mean by that is that um, having done a lot of the work that I've done over the years, which I talk about in my in my CD cover booklet, um, so I've done everything from sort of, um, you know, working with incredible practitioners, studying everything from yoga and meditation to tantra to hyperbaric to actually, you know, I've actually tried psilocybin magic mushrooms to really try and elevate my energy so that I'm really in my creative flow and so that I can also shed the past programs because we all grow up um, as a, I like to use the word victim, but as a, as a product of our childhood, whatever mm-hmm. that was. Yeah. Um, yet as human beings, we're much more than just our what our childhood was, we're actually capable of so much more than we often give ourselves credit for. And we hang on to a lot of self-limiting beliefs that keep us stuck in our boxes, you know, within our walled, limited perspective of ourselves and what our full capability is. So I think a lot of people actually don't challenge themselves and sort of remain asleep at a certain level of consciousness until either somebody comes into their life that challenges them and they either step up or they step out at that point and then that might happen to them a repeated number of times and we all know that experience oh my god this is happening again and again what is the message here until we learn what the lesson is and then we can go forward to our next stage of consciousness and we keep raising our consciousness now the best way to raise our consciousness I believe is to do activities that 
where we're more on the right side of our brain. So that is actually singing and dancing, meditating, you know, walking in nature, going to the ocean, hugging people we love. These are all places where we recharge our energy batteries and we stop the overwhelm that we feel in our lives today with too much technology, too much information and content that we have to somehow manage. It's a hard balance. Mm, it's so true. And I, I actually th- struggle with this myself. I mean, I really struggle to stay in that place that I know I can be in versus the other place, which is such a de-energized, you know, sort of negative, cynical place versus the really positive, optimistic, productive side of myself. I have to keep working to be in that space. Yeah. Yeah. I can relate to to it a hundred percent, and I think that you know when you're talking about technology, I always say that yeah. I'm not tech savvy, but as I think I choose not to be because I find it almost overwhelming at times. Whereas you mm. know, if it was you know a choice of being creative, whether it's writing, singing for you, whatever there may be, that's where I feel like I'm in flow with the universe, and mm. I feel my energy. I feel. Uh, on purpose I feel alive compared to running around and being distracted by noise um, Mm. and um, also being distracted by technology Mm. no I think that's great and I honestly I wish I could switch off from the grid like that Mm. (laughs) you know I think I would do anything to just like not have to respond to literally hundreds of emails a day and just be free of all of that and just try to focus on the bigger picture but it's it's hard like I mean we are living in a world that is you know where you do have to process quite a lot of information even if you want to be relatively you know even if even to be you I mean you have to reply to your emails and run your podcasts and you know there's lots of stuff you have to do in your daily life just to get get through life and make sure you've got food on the table and that you you know you're paying your bank accounts and stuff so there's a certain amount we all have to do I still haven't I haven't worked out exactly how to disconnect mm. from from that yet. Um, but I do know that, for example, I went to one of our with one voice choirs last night. I was just able to stand there with the group and enjoy singing the songs with them and enjoy the resonance of that and the energy of that and oh, gorgeous and f- feel healed by that. It's it's very powerful. Mm, absolutely. And, and I, I think that, um, you know, when we're talking about emails, quite a lot of the entrepreneurs we've had on the show have have um, uh, set themselves a bit of a strategy where they might only spend two hours on emails. Uh, and then more and more, there's a lot of more, the, I guess, more research about, you know, the impact emails. You know, some people get addicted to have their inbox empty. Mm. And how effective is that? Um, mm. So you know, it's it's one of those things. Like for me, with emails, I'm um, practicing how to become better at because I'm one. I I used to be one of those people that had to have my inbox empty all the time. Where it's now, it's like I only respond to the ones that are of urgent, um, and the rest I I I attend to them when I've got time. Mm. Well, yeah, it's fantastic. Or you can, you know, there's lots of VAs in the Philippines. Well, and- yes. <laughs> and other people who are desperate to, you know, to have work and who can go through your inbox and yeah, help you. Absolutely. So, Tanya, during mm. your journey to where you are today, mm. what were some of your greatest lessons? So my greatest lessons um, have been never give up. <laughs> so, you know, even though you might get pushed down a thousand times, if you really believe in something, keep, you know, keep trying. Though I think also one of my lessons – that I have learned is also when to let go. So you also have to know when to let go in that in that process. Um, and there's a balance with that. Uh, one of the other big lessons is around failure. So, you know, you could think that when things don't work out that you're a failure, that you're not good enough, et cetera, and that used to be one of my underlying sort of um, – inner thoughts, I guess, especially when my friend told me I wasn't good enough to have singing lessons and so on. And even when I got the lead role in the school musical, I always had this program I was not good enough. This went on for many years. Um, But now I like to think of fail as first attempt in learning. Mm, I love that. (laughs) Mm, Or fantastic achievement in life even. You know, like, you know, I pretty much would not hire anybody who hasn't 
told me about their failures. Um, because if you can't talk about how you failed and the obstacles you've had in life, when obstacles do come, you're not going to really be able to deal with them and you won't have the resilience you need. Um, but I think, you know, I learned about failure too through my grandmother, who I mentioned before, who invented the first foldable umbrella. And we have all her working notes. I tried this today, I failed, but tomorrow I'm going to try this. And you can see that over a period of many months, she kept trying her design until, you know, successfully in September 1929, she um, invented the flirt, the foldable umbrella, which all foldable umbrellas today are still based on her original design. Incredible. Wow. Really. So it runs in yeah. the fa family, obviously, the cre the creative mm. gene. Innovation's in my blood, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, yeah. Tanya, we love to ask our entrepreneurs about their biggest pain points because we believe that every mm. business and every entrepreneur has a pain point. What would be one of your biggest pain points at the moment? My biggest pain point would be um, finding the right people to work with me at the energy level that I'm that I'm wanting to work at and I don't like I don't mean that anyone everyone should try and keep up with me because I am a bit of a human force of nature um, but but by that I mean people who really resonate with the sort of thinking that I have who are prepared to be challenged to continuously keep learning who have a real drive to affect change at a global level um, and I think a lot of people want the titles. They want, they want to do this work, and they truly, they truly believe that um, they can do this work. But when it comes down to the actual really hard stuff, um, they find it too difficult. And by the hard stuff, I mean people who really can um, have the persistence and tenacity to lock in partnerships and funding. Because without that, with any enterprise you'll fail because you won't be able to – if you don't have the partnerships and funds you need, then you can't employ people to really make your, your dream come to fruition. And I think that's been my biggest challenge, though, as I said to you earlier, I mean, there are some great people I've worked with for a long time who've been amazing and, you know, and there's some people, I mean, you know, my co-founder in my group, Potpourri, I've worked with him actually for 30 years. And even though we used to be romantic partners for a long time of that period, we're now not, and we still work together <laughs> and sing together. So I think that it's really difficult to find others who are good at doing the deals. Mm, yeah. Rainmaker, rainmakers. Yeah, yeah, perfect. No, and I can relate to that Abundant one too. thinkers, actually abundant thinkers and manifestors manifestors yeah people who not only you, you've got to actually walk the talk not just talk the talk yeah absolutely and I think that we had yeah. that conversation before got on, on the show that I could relate to that very much so and I think it's really hard when you're um you know you're going a thousand miles an hour because especially when you're creative I find that you know I've just from knowing you for a short time I think you have a lot an abundance of information that you just channel through it just comes through you and I think that mm. you can see that you're into so many different areas when it comes to innovation and, and creation and it's yeah. about finding people that can continue that legacy but maybe mm -hmm. not be exactly like you because I think you're quite unique no 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 uh, I don't expect anyone but, to be like me but maybe somebody <laughs> that can I guess bring something a little bit different to you and where they could collaborate mm -hmm. with you and keep driving it because it does take a lot of the energy which is what you naturally have and I think there's sometimes that when it's something that you've created from your heart uh, your mm. heart and your soul, because I, I like I said to you, you know, when I listened to your song, it was very angelic. It's mm. about having someone with that kind of energy. Yeah, it does need to be an angel energy. Um, and, you know, I think actually what I'm looking for is um, or in terms of, of, of all of my businesses, like my conference or, you know, I was saying before, I'm sort of looking for people to hand over, I guess, some of my enterprises um over to and i think they do need to be people who do come from their hearts and souls and i don't think at all they should be like me i mean i wouldn't actually wish myself on anyone else mm, yeah. <laughs> um, i don't mean that in a negative way or a positive way it's just we're all unique beings and um everyone has their unique voice and and they they do things their way mm. but you're right in saying that a lot of what i've created has just come to me like I don't feel that I've 
I haven't deliberately tried to create these things. In a sense, they've found me and they've come through me and I've been a vehicle for those things to occur. And I think that um, I want to work with people who understand that, you know, if you raise your consciousness, then anything's possible. Like everything, all the information that we ever need is is almost actually, it's within ourselves or one degree away really. Yeah. <laughs> um, we we are we have so much more knowledge than we could ever imagine. I agree. I think that once you know, I always say that once the more open you become, the more conscious you're tapping into infinite intelligence. Mm. Yeah, uh, and it's just to be conscious and aware that we can do that. But then also mm. to do that, there have to be a, a moment of silence, a stillness, because otherwise, mm. if you're moving so fast, how can you connect with it? Um, mm. I mean, you can dance with it, absolutely, but I think mm. that it's really important for you to be able to allow it to come flowing through mm -hmm. rather than uh, trying so hard to make it happen because in, in actual fact, and I talk about this all the time, when we push so hard for something to um, come to fruition or we want to manifest something, we're actually pushing it away. And I think totally. it's really – Totally. No, no, I never try. Yeah, no, no I know to... that, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, well, the Steve Jobs, just, so Steve Jobs said, you know, creativity is simply about connecting the dots so that when you want or need to get creative, I, I very much believe you, you need that creative toolbox, as I talk about in my TED Talk, that you've got this rich, diverse set of life experiences so that – when the time comes and, and you, you know, you call to the universe and say, help me with, help me solve this problem. And all of a sudden, actually, a lot of the answers come to you. It might sound a bit loopy, but, it, but it's actually the case. If you, if you really allow yourself to be an open channel and if you really allow your previous experiences to inform you rather than hold you back, so often people let their stories, um, you know, uh, define who they are going forwards but actually mm. what you do is you use your past stories to empower you yeah. um, to become more creative and mm. to, to step way beyond what you thought was possible and that is what is I think really inspiring when I see that happen you know and I see that in my cries actually I see a lot of people who step beyond what they ever thought was possible mm. a girl called Annabelle who was in my office today you know she's 26 year old now but when she joined my choir, I think she was about 22, 23. She'd been looking for a job for six years. She has cerebral palsy. She asked for help through our wish list for help with her resume. She got help with her resume. And this is, again, about asking the universe to get the help. She got a job, but it was one of those jobs, employed dis disabled person, tick a box with an employment agency. They let her go after eight weeks, but then she came back. She asked again for a job then a lady that night happened to be there from a small business who I'd invited along she gave Annabelle a job three days a week she, Annabelle's now been with her for two years the longest she's ever held a job actually wow. she's 29 now now she runs the wish list program for our choir she updates the website she comes and volunteers here and she now earns enough money to sponsor two disadvantaged people to be in our choirs I mean, you know, it's it's an incredible circle of reciprocity that you can mm. create once you're open to the universe. I totally agree. Hence so, the creative universe. You yeah, know. exactly. <laughs> no, I was about to say that, hence the creative universe. Uh, Tanya, mm. we always love to ask our woman of inspiration to pick one word that best describes her personal brand. So what would be that one word for you? Oh, um, one word that describes my personal brand. Gosh, creativity. Mm. Yep, of course. I was I was expecting creativity <laughs> or innovation, something like that. Mm. Or and, voice. Being or nice. voice, yes. Mm. Uh, the other thing we do as we wrap up the show is we ask our woman of inspiration to leave three shiny golden nuggets for our listeners. So what would be those three shiny golden nuggets that you would like to leave for our listeners? Definitely. And also, by the way, Catherine, I'd love to introduce the song um, that you're going to play to oh, when you I will. Play it. I will. But three golden nuggets. Uh, have positive human collisions on a regular basis. That is, get out of your comfort zone and connect with people who are really different from you on a regular basis and you will find that creativity and innovation will really start to, to spark. So when I go to the choir and I connect with people who have disabilities, depression, whatever it is, all of a sudden I start to realise actually I could be them, they could be me and all of a sudden once you start to feel incredible gratitude for where you are and you start to connect with people who are very different, you change your perspective and don't hold on to your locked-on views 
and start to think differently. Never give up, as I said before. Um, so fail equals first attempt in learning and don't be too hard on yourself. Mm. <laughs> it's actually good to fail, and but pick yourself up and try again. Don't give up when you fail. Um, and then finally, I think the third thing is to go into the right side of your brain and to connect to all that is and re remove the separation, the us and them mentality and really find that sense of non-duality and oneness, which is the true nature of being a human being. Oh, I love them all. So, Tanya, before we introduce the song, how can our listeners find you? What's the best place? Uh, so www.creativeuniverse.com.au www.tanyadeyong, T-A-N-I-A-D-E-J-O-N-G.com and www.creativityaustralia.org.au for the charity. And, of course, we'd love to see lots of people come to Creative Innovation 2017, which is www.ci2017.com.au. And we'll have all of those links in the show notes. And so, Tanya, would you like to introduce your song? And before you do that, I just want to say thank you so much for your time, your energy. It's wonderful. And for the listeners out there, I've listened to the song and uh, it's beautiful. So over mm -hmm. to you, Tanya, to introduce the song. No, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And please do connect with me. So this song is called Flying Free and it's the title track of my second solo CD, it came to me on the top of Machu Picchu and I pictured a group of all the people that I loved in the world, friends, family, colleagues, coming together in one place and my gratitude for them being in my lives because everyone is a gift and that I will keep a place in my heart for all of them no matter what happens going forwards. And I think if we can all keep a place in our hearts and, and recognise that actually we're all part of the same fabric in the same universe then we will be able to fly free and and uh, live better lives mm, thank you so much and for our listeners enjoy
that brings us to the end of another episode. I hope you enjoyed the show as it is my mission to reach out and inspire as many individuals like you. And one of the best ways to help us achieve this goal is by giving us a good review on iTunes. It's easy and it only takes about 10 seconds. If you have any questions or special guests that you would like to hear from, please send us an email to support at katherineplano.com.au and we will get right back to you. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter or Facebook at Catherine Plano. That's it for now. Thanks for listening. Until next week, please take care.